that a little glitch in the matrix. Um, so what I was talking about was um, that for most of the wallpaper work, we're not really dealing with external lighting and all of the images are providing its own light. So they're shadeless, they're, they're shining. And also the way they're structured, uh, it's much easier to just automate that. And the way I'm doing it is with Python. Uh, Blender has got amazing uh, integration of Python scripting. So that's another sort of uh, non-visual way but we'll see once you look at those uh, gray graph setups that sometimes it's actually more legible than, uh, than graphs. But one of the things that is very different between the two is that you, know, you run these scripts uh, you know, one time as a, as a batch, uh, while the power of the geometry node setup is that it's being evaluated all the time. So it's just, it's, it, it's just uh, permanently there being executed. So I'm just uh, loading a bunch of PNGs and uh, uh, they end up in this. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that is uh, specific to, uh, to the uh, EV engine. Things stacking in, in depth sometimes causes uh, weird issues and if you run into that, it's very likely uh, in your uh, material settings, it's the alpha blending uh, that's being really difficult. Uh, so if you have problems uh, with that, um, usually the, um, the, 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 the way to solve it is, well, I mean, I would have to like do it for all the materials, but whatever is, uh, to either do the, the hashed uh, method of dealing with transparency or just wiggle the camera a little and uh, things are going to be fine. So that's the old way. So now with GNOME 44, I've redone this setup uh, using geometry nodes. There's a, there's a number of reasons why that's beneficial. Um, one of them is that I can like easily regenerate uh, a different set. So for the next release, if I wanted to have a different layout, you know, I can just modify the. So geometry nodes is like this modifier. If you're familiar with with the modifier stack in Blender, that allows you to really. Uh, create these systems that either change or even create geometry. And geometry can be, you know, meshes, it can be volumetrics, it can be uh, curves, it could be anything. And it can even like change between the methods. Um, so it's really easy to like create, uh, let me dissolve this one, let's dissolve edges yeah so you know very easily you can and if if i want i can change the the set of icons so the way i'm loading the the icons is the same i just have a folder full of pngs then i have a script that loads them and then this setup uh will distribute them uh the great thing about nodes is that they're real time. Like you're everything you're doing, it immediately uh, comes up on your screen. And that's just like, uh, it's a godsend for iteration. Um, even though you might not grok exactly, like there's gonna be some uh, like vector uh, math and like changing uh, a vector to a rotation and it's like really tricky to wrap my head around it and i remember from school that i really hated matrices and i thought it's something that i'll never run into in my entire life well i was wrong actually yes this is a lot of lots of vector math uh creating these systems and uh you know, while 
I don't feel like I understand. It's like it like you you you're tweaking something and you see a result. So it's really excellent. So so what is it? So geometry nodes is a modifier just like if you would add a cube and had like wanted to smooth it uh, you would use the subdivision surface so it's it's a modifier that that changes the source uh, data which in in this case is a mesh and outputs usually the same kind of data with geometry nodes you're way more flexible and you don't even have to input data and produce uh, some other uh, you know, mesh or uh, a curve or something else. Um, so that's that's really powerful. Uh, so in this case, I wanted to keep um, the 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 source mesh because that is what gives me the control. So I'm creating a simple grid uh, mesh grid, and the system, the geometry node setup, fills up all the faces with an icon. So we're going to look at how, you know, I'm computing like the surface, uh, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, the, the sort of heart of the operation, well, yeah, the, the heart of the operation is the instance on points uh, node. So what this does is that it creates something that's also a data type, like a like mesh or a curve. It's an instance of something else, and it's different. Problematic is that you know it looks the same, so you can have instances of meshes, and suddenly you're really uh, struggling to figure out why things don't work because you're expecting operations on meshes, but these are instances. Instances are sort of these copies that are very memory efficient. You can you know, render millions, like the same way you can render vertices, you could render inst, well, I mean, it's probably not <laughs> just as dramatic, but it's very like memory um, optimized to be using instances. So you can like get a lot of things going on on your screen with instances. Um, but if stuff later you want to do on, on the actual mesh uh, and you've got instances, you can convert between the data types. You can convert like meshes to curves back to meshes. You can convert uh, meshes to volume and so on. Like, like that's, that's very powerful. Um, Within the within the geometry node system, so we're creating instances of points. So where do we get the points? Well, in this case, if even if you don't do anything, so this is the input. This is what before this this geometry nodes modifier gets executed. That's what you had. Now you can use it. You don't have to use it. Like if I would create, uh, let's say, a grid. I hope it's a mesh grid. And instead of um, you know those vertices, I can feed it something else, and it completely ignores the source geometry. Uh, but we want to have control over um, the the layout, so I'm I'm using that. And if you would feed a mesh directly into the the points input on the uh, on the instances on points, then uh, you know this this maps. So vertices are essentially points. So that's good. But what Blender does, it does uh, you know silently a conversion. It has mesh to points, where uh, essentially it's the equivalent of of doing this. Uh, I'm doing faces instead of vertices because I want to do the the scaling of uh, of the bitmap um, to fit the size of the face. So that's also something you can compute. Um, there's one sort of um, amazing thing very use it all the time and that's that you don't have to like 
instance is what you're you're feeding what you're creating on every point so it can be a mesh for example you can do a cube this is instancing rather than you know a a mesh primitive this is taking uh things from a uh a collection like here so i have the icons here all all imported uh one thing I didn't mention, uh, if you're going to be dealing with pixel graphics, is that to get this sort of nice pixel rendering, you don't want any filtering on these uh, pix maps, and that's done um, in the shader editor when you have uh, so when you have the icon, one of the options is the filtering method so you want the the closest rather than i think linear is is the default but those are always um you know methods that would um uh, you know make a fuzzy if you're dealing with with tiny little pix maps that they would get fuzzy like that um so that's why you you need no filtering and in here we're instancing, rather than instancing the whole uh, collection on every of these points, you can instance, um, you know, pick instance, which would pick one. By default, that would mean, um, that would sequentially, like it has an order of the, of the points. Every mesh has, you know, all those vertices are ordered. And so to have it randomly, uh, you can have a random value node, which would be uh, this all sorts of like random uh, data types that you can generate. And one of them is integer. Uh, I'm computing the, the number of, the number of uh, elements from the collection uh so there's a domain size uh node that can count the number of instances um so i rather than uh setting it uh as a fixed number i'm getting that from the collection and then it like randomly generates uh a pix map on each of these um points this is very legible or uh, reasonably legible graph, but it's mixing like a couple of, this is like actual data coming in while these uh, uh, purple things are something called fields. So that's like a, like a cook or a, a recipe of how to deal with the data. Um, so like you have a very simple graph, but it's actually like doing on each of the vertices coming in, perform something. So until I get the data, you know, this is this is like this can be the same sort of graph can be used on a in a completely different context and still work because it is a like a recipe how to deal with with those things. So in here, this is um, and I don't think I need this. Like this is just like picking up some some uh, faces uh, that we don't need and uh, like randomly. So I don't know why I have that there. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so uh, this kind of expects all these icons to come in uh, on a flat surface. But the, the great thing about geometry nodes is that you can apply the same sort of um, modifier on a different object so let's say we would add a cube and i would let me just uh, only show the cube and i would uh use the same i think there's a bug a minute warning all right all right all right i'm gonna so i'll i've i've used the same uh setup on on a cube but now because we're not dealing with how the uh Pix map is uh, angled. Um, let's try to fix that by using the normal. 
And as you can see, like what we're doing here is um, we're, we're taking the source mesh and we're taking, we're putting points at the center of each face. And when we do that, like even if I was being smart and wanted to do a rotation, so let's do a rotation. Well, to see anything, I'm gonna first use something that I was using beforehand, and that was uh, dual mesh, which would be like very similar to this, uh, but it would like generate a mesh from the source mesh where it would put a vertex at a face of the original mesh and then just like glue it together. So create like this new mesh with faces and everything. And that's where this thing will kind of sort of work, but not really. So we want to rotate each of the instances based on the normal. And this is another sort of thing that is hard to grasp for me uh, because of what fields are, you know? So I'm getting like this data and then like, where's what's normal? And you can like put this, the same node, you know, at a different places of the graph. And it's gonna do a different thing because this doesn't mean anything on its own. It means something based on the data that it is connected to. So in here, it means a normal of the, the, the mesh that's coming in, of the faces of the mesh that, that's coming in. Uh, also, like it's very random because uh, you know, normals are vectors, which, you know, if you try to remember maths, it's like a, like a direction and speed and, you know, change of position uh, in space. Uh, so in most cases in here, it's, it's three values that define the change between the previous position and this position, and we want rotation. So it's like an angle. So how do we change that? Well, there's nothing called vector to angle. There's vector to Euler. Gotta remember. And I think it's align Euler to vector. All right, so it's doing something. And I think, hmm, all right. Well, it's doing something else than we wanted. But it doesn't matter because uh, it, it's still wonky because of the source mesh we're doing. Like I have no idea what, what kind of things it's doing. So let's go back to like, let's keep this. And I think it's, it's this one that we want. Oh, this is gonna go terribly wrong. Uh, and let's, let's feed it back these points, which doesn't do anything because uh, these have no normals. So what we need to do is somehow capture the normals from the, the previous uh, mesh. And there's a node called capture attribute. So I'm gonna capture attribute, I'm gonna feed it with this geometry and I wanna capture the normal of a, so this is gonna be a vector and it's gonna be a phase, all right? Somehow we lost it. Yeah, it's like it's it's fiddly. I, I I don't particularly like dealing with the graph, to be honest. Anyway, so this this is the geometry. And this is the attribute. So we're gonna replace this guy with this guy. I'm not like feeding it the normal as a rotation but it needs to be a vector. So I'm converting the vector to the rotation, not a rotation to a rotation. All right, I'm glad we figured it out. Um, so now like every, every um, mesh that we're gonna feed it is going to like use, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not, not super uh, accurate, I guess, but yeah, it's, it's enough accurate for me, you know, so. It's doing the rotation, so that's good. Um, and I'm gonna, like, I have only a couple of minutes, but I wanna show you at least the uh, symbolic nodes setup, which is 
something that was in the previous release. And so this sort of setup shows another great thing about nodes is that you're creating these systems. And as I mentioned, they are um, uh, modifiers, but you can have multiple modifiers, which is you know very useful in structuring your work. I don't like the sort of, like the only aid you have, you, you gotta do a lot of what we call shit work to deal with, with nodes. They're really great for discovering and forming the, the graph, but it's really terrible going back and understanding what you did and why things work the way uh, they do. You have this framing um, ability. So every time you have a couple of nodes, so if I just like copy a bunch of these, I'll have to like get them out, which is a shortcut, I don't remember. Uh, can I just do a different one? Yeah, so so you can like group them, frame them. They're not groups. Groups are something else. Um, if you uh, if you uh, uh, group things, it's good for instancing the same you know uh, set of nodes. It works in both uh, the shader, which I use very often. Uh, and probably here as well. So you can group, but that's a different thing. So you can you can like uh, color and and group things together. So you understand. So in here, I have a two set of, two uh, geo nodes set up. One is for like creating this, um, um, you know, setup that deals with the proximity to this uh, to this mesh and plugging holes. But the thing I wanted to show you is that these. Uh, so you create these, it's elaborate, but you create these note setups, but then you can expose, you know, using these group input things, you can plug, you know, uh, there's an empty slot here. So any parameter they have here, you can expose, you know, to the outside world uh, on the modifier stack right here. So I can like have not show holes uh, or have holes, uh, create like a different size for the for the hole and that sort of thing so like it's you're structuring your uh, your uh, uh, project and uh, you can expose them publicly I see Marie uh, dragging me out of uh, this this usually happens uh, but I'll go, I'll provide links to these uh, these projects and I'll point you to the documentation so that you can actually learn about how, how things work rather than me just showing what can be done. Anyway, I thank you for uh, your attention. And I guess we're going to have a few questions that I won't be able to answer. <laughs> yeah, let's let's take, take the question that we have here. There's only one. Um, so the nodes available in geometry nodes seem to change between Blender versions. Any hints for how to keep up with the changes? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually quite tricky. And the, the thing is that Blender actually completely redesigned the system of geometry nodes. Uh, I don't know if it was three, four. Well, th th there was just initial release of geometry nodes and I completely let it let it uh, go by because I knew it's coming and it's going to be amazing, but I don't have the time to deal with that. And that was one of the great decisions of my life because it was completely <laughs> redesigned and works completely different with that fields uh, 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 approach. And it's completely different. And it's true that, um, you know, there's lots of new nodes, but usually the thing is uh, nodes uh that are coming sort of become more and more specific so things that you need to do with vector math these days and you have to like uh, you know multiply the two vectors and remember that like uh adding two vectors means that you get the resulting you know and it's, it's just <laughs> that's something i want to i want to avoid and usually the new nodes simplify things so for example i wanted to demo you how to create grids of things um, 
where you would have a, a mesh line and you would instance another line in the opposite direction on each of these points and then the resulting mesh you would instance your objects on but then a grid node happened and then you have a have a grid uh, now you can instance like here i wanted to show you how to instance uh, on volume so you convert uh, your mesh into volume so you can either have the whole object space as a volume or even just the skin of it and then instance objects in there so that was also pretty difficult to do back then and now it's now it's great and easy but i understand the the need to have your project openable uh, you know sometimes in the future uh, blender has these long-term support releases uh where uh if you're a studio and you want to, you know, uh, rely on something that will be here and supportable for a long time, you probably want to stick there. But like Geometry Notes is very fresh. So I don't think that, well, I haven't actually checked, but like you might be lucky and, you know, the release that's uh, uh, marked as long term support has Geometry Notes. So I would suggest going with that and then, then you're, uh, uh, you're sure that an update will not break your uh, project files. I have to say that that happens very rarely uh, for me. Uh, I have projects that I did, you know, in 99, and I can still open them in Blender. I mean, they don't have nice. all this fancy new stuff, but uh, look, it's 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 pretty impressive. Uh, uh, that the backward cool. compatibility is is kind of nice, and like. Uh, you could probably be able to like go back to a, an old version and and you know uh, still open to do uh, some tweaks. But yeah, it's inevitable. Like if if you want to keep up, you gotta you gotta watch for the changes. Awesome. Well, we look forward to the links that you provide in the yeah. channel. Right. And thank you so much for your presentation and joining us today. This was awesome. It was a pleasure. Um, Glad to have you.